everyone welcome to my channel in today's video i am very excited to share with all of you a full face of pillow talk so this is charlotte tilbury's iconic pinky nude color story so i'll be showcasing her pillow talk luxury eye quad this is the original eyeshadow in her line in the pillow talk color story and then i'll also be adding in my cheek to chic in the shade pillow talk intense and then also recently she released all shades of her pillow talk lipsticks and lip liners in the mini form so i'll be swatching and demoing all of these on my lips so you guys can see the shade comparisons so if you guys are interested in seeing more about pillow talk then just stick around so before we get into the swatches and the demo i just wanted to share with all of you a few overall reflections about pillow talk so as you can probably tell from my collection i have been very interested in pillow talk the color story and i really enjoy charlotte tilbury products so i've accumulated quite a decent pillow talk collection as a result but I have to admit, I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Pillow Talk. So basically, I really love the idea of the pinky nude color story, and I really love how the products look in pan. But for me personally, it tends to be really a hit or miss in terms of whether they actually work well on my face. And so as you'll see today, for instance, with the Luxury Eye Quad, I usually need to pair this with some other eyeshadows in order to get it to look on my lids the way it looks in pan, which is kind of pink and brown and pretty neutral. With the cheek to chic, I've had better luck, but that's mostly because I still like how it looks, even though it doesn't really translate as a pinky nude on my cheeks. And so I'm really curious today in my first impressions of these lip products to see how they look on my face. In general, what I found with the previous Pillow Talk products is that typically they translate as a lot more orange on my face compared to how they look in pan or how they look on other people. And so as a result, I'm not really getting the kind of nude neutral look so much as kind of more of a pinky orangey spring look which is still nice but not necessarily what i'm going for so i just wanted to put that disclaimer out there i'm going into this expecting that the undertones might not be quite right but i'm hoping that i can still make these products work out because i have been just so intrigued by the pillow talk line so without further ado let's get into this makeup look so to start off with eyeshadow i'm going to go in with my chikahoto gsn 9 brush into that prime shade and just put that kind of all over the lid, focusing on the inner two thirds area. And I'm doing this a little bit out of order today, but I'll provide the swatches after the demo. So in case you guys were wondering. So here we are with the prime shade down and you can see that it really is kind of like a glittery primer on the lids. So by itself, it doesn't really provide any sort of pigmentation or opacity. So you definitely wanna build some additional shades up around this color. Next up with my Wayne Goss number 16 brush, I'm gonna go into this enhanced shade which is the really pretty pinky shade that I tried to match with my sweater today. And this is what really provides that pillow talk look. And I'm gonna apply this pretty generously, basically both in the crease area, but also kind of on top of the prime shade in the outer two thirds of the eye, just so we have enough of that pinky dynamic going. Same thing on the other eye. And this is probably my favorite shade in this palette because this is the one that really gives me those Pillow Talk vibes. As you'll see, the other shades are the ones that kind of add in a little bit more of that orangey hue, which I'm not a huge fan of. Next with my Wayne Goss number 17, I'm gonna go into the Smoke shade, which even though it's called Smoke is definitely not that deep, but I'm just gonna put this on the outer third. And as you guys might be able to see, this is a very warm brown shade. So it does sort of add a little bit of oranginess to the lids if you're not careful. And so I'm gonna actually go into a separate palette to add a little bit more depth and also kind of cool this down a little bit. But before that, let's go ahead into this pop shade and just sweep this all over center of the lid and also a lobe on the inner third. And this pop shade also has a little bit of kind of a golden reflect to it, which on top of the pink can translate a little bit as orange. I would say if you're used to the high impact Pat McGrath topper shades provide, this 
pop shade is definitely not going to blow your socks off. But I think this is more for kind of like an everyday look. I'm building up the pop shade a bit just because I want a little bit more glam, but definitely on an everyday basis, you can just have a light wash. Now I'm just going to take my GSN brush again and just refine any edges so that pop shade blends in well with everything else. Now for the lower lash line, I'm going to go in with my Wayne Goss number 20 brush into Enhance just to bring some of that pinkiness all over the lower lash line. I'm now just going to dip a little bit into the smoke shade and also drag that on the outer thirds of the lower lash line. Now with my S31 from Isom, I'm going to take some of that prime shade and just sweep that on the inner third, pulling it out across the middle and connecting it with the outer third. So this is the complete eye look for the Pillow Talk quad. But as you can tell, there's not a ton of depth to it and it is running a little bit warm and orangey on my lids. And so a hack I've been employing lately is to pair that quad with my Viseart Neutral Mattes palette. Cause this palette really has a lot of beautiful deeper tones in it, especially in more of the cool tone category that can just kind of tone down this look and make it look a bit more nude rather than orangey. So first off going back in with my Wayne Goss number 17, I'm gonna go into this shade over here, which is a pretty neutral brown. And I'm just gonna sweep this over the outer third and bring it in a little bit. So basically where we put the smoke shade. And now with my Wayne Goss number 19 brush, I'm gonna take a tiny bit of this deepest shade just to define the outer corner. So I'm gonna lightly sweep this on the outer corner, concentrating it closer to the lash line and then gradually blending it upwards. Really just need the tiniest of pigment on this brush. And then going back in with my Isom S31, I'm also gonna take a tiny bit of this shade to just define the outer corner. So just a tiny, tiny bit of that and just lightly dabbing that sort of in the outer portion of the eye, just to add a little bit more definition. You could also just use a brown eyeliner for this step and just sort of smudge it out. And then to finish things off, I'm gonna go back in with my Wayne Goss number 17 and just take a tiny bit of this cooler brown shade just to sweep this all over the outer third. And this is just further to blend everything in. So here we are with the completed eye look. And personally, I am really glad that I figured out this combo of using this eye quad with the Viseart Neutral Mattes palette. I know it's a little bit of a cheat because this palette is quite expensive on its own. So this is an $80 palette, but I think you can use any palette that you have that has some more neutral or cool leaning brown tones. And I think that's a really good way to achieve more of a pillow talk effect in terms of actually more of a pinky brownie nude rather than what the pillow talk products themselves will give you, which is not exactly that effect. So now let's go into the cheeks. So I have my Sonia G Cheek Pro here and I'm going to first just use the outer ring of this cheek to cheek just so you guys can see how that looks. And usually I would put on bronzer first but today it's mostly about pillow talk so I want to just show you guys how this looks and then I'll add bronzer after the blush. So you can see that for this product at least the outer ring is matte. In some of her other cheek to cheeks, the outer ring has some shimmer in it, but this one is pretty matte. Any shimmer you see is probably just spillover from the inner portion of the blush. So I will say on me, the outer ring does take a little bit of building up. I don't know if it's just the formula because it is a shade that as you'll see in the swatches is fairly pigmented. I mean, this is the intense version of Pillow Talk. But as you can probably see right now, it is sort of a powdery formula that does take a little bit of building up. For me, the inner ring is really what packs more of a punch for this blush. And so normally I wouldn't do it like this where I separate the two. Typically I would just swirl them together and that gives me a little bit more pigmentation. So hopefully this gives you guys some sense of the shade of the outer ring. I'm not a huge fan, as I mentioned, of just the outer ring formula by itself. I feel like it is a tiny bit patchy on my skin and doesn't show up super strongly, but I think mixed in with the inner ring, it's really nice. And the shade of the outer ring by itself does match quite well with the eye look, 
but kind of similar to the eyeshadow before I added the Viseart, it does run a little bit warm and coppery. So now let's go into that inner ring. I'm gonna first just concentrate that on the apples of my cheeks so you can sort of see the shade a little bit better. As you can probably tell, there is a decent amount of shimmer in this in comparison to the matte outer ring. But you see just two little dots of that did provide an additional dose of pigmentation. So I'm also just gonna bring that outward as well because even though Charlotte has her whole swish and pop system. I find I just kind of like to have the shimmer throughout, especially on days like today where I'm not gonna be going in with highlighter. There we go, cheeks down. So I usually use this blush not on days when I'm going for really a nude or neutral look. Rather, I like this on days when I am doing more of a warm toned look because I do feel like it runs more on the coppery side. And also, in case you guys are interested in the Walk of No Shame blush, it's kind of funny. I bought both this and that one because both shades really spoke to me. But the Walk of No Shame, even though it's described as a berry rose, at least on my skin tone, looks very similar to this one. So I find the outer ring of the Walk of No Shame, which is the one that actually has the berry rose pigment, looks a lot like these two shades mixed together. And so I definitely would not recommend getting both of them unless you just really like the slight tiny subtle differences between the two. Basically the Walk of No Shame is less pigmented and more shimmery since both the inner and outer rings have shimmer, whereas this one is going to be less shimmery and also slightly more pigmented. But other than that, the actual shades look extremely similar. Now before we get into the lipsticks, which I have not tried before, let's go ahead and do some swatches. So here are the four shades finger swatched and you can see they are relatively light on my skin. So we have Prime, Enhance, Pop, and Smoke. So here they are arm swatched and you can see that the prime shade actually has some pinkiness in it. So even though on my lids, it basically just comes across as white shimmer, it does have some pink. So if you're fairer than me, that pink might be able to show up. Also the pop shade has a little bit more peachiness to it than pink. So that's where some of the slight orange tones can come in. And I really built up the smoke shade in this swatch so you could see the shade better but it is a little bit lighter typically. So overall, I really love the way these shades look, again, in pan and swatched, but I do feel like I need to do a little bit extra work to get them to show up on my lids in this way. Next, here are the two finger swatches of the blush, so the outer ring and the inner ring. And here are the arm swatches. So you can definitely see that they are in a very similar color story to the eyeshadow palette. It's a little bit hard to tell in swatch, but definitely this inner pop shade has some shimmer to it, which you can see a lot better, I think, on the cheeks. There's some reflectivity, even though I don't have any highlight on. And then this outer ring is going to be matte. So now the moment I've been eagerly awaiting, let's go ahead and try these new minis. And so before I do the swatches and demo, I did want to just comment a bit on the packaging. So first off, I just wanted to show you guys the regular size lip liner next to the mini. And you can see that these are extremely similar. Basically, this is just like a half size of the regular. And so I really like that because I never finish up lip liners anyway. So having a mini is perfect for that. In terms of the lipstick, there's a little bit more of a quality difference here. So fortunately, at least in terms of how the packaging looks, they look basically the same, just with the mini being a little bit smaller. So both of them still have the CT logo here, and both of them have very similar outer packaging. But of course, this one's a lot lighter and doesn't have that nice, luxurious, weighty feel that this larger one has. Also, I will say that I feel like these mini lipsticks are a little bit cheaply made. So just now when I took off the lid, the force of taking off the lid like pulled out the entire bullet. So I feel like these are not very firmly embedded into the lipstick holder. So be very careful when you take off the lid. Otherwise your lipstick might just go flying. So that part I'm a little bit disappointed in. I would definitely say the lip liner, the mini size, no problem. But if you do find a version of the lipstick that you like, maybe buy it in the full size instead of the mini. 
but today we're mostly doing swatches and shade comparisons, so the minis will be fine for that purpose. So now let's get into the shade comparisons. So first off here is Pillow Talk Original. Here it is swatched, and upon initial impression, it does look a little bit more berry toned than all of these powder products down here. So let me go ahead and put on this lip liner. And here is the lip liner on. So you can see that it's pretty cool toned and pink on my lips. I filled in my lips a little bit more than usual just so you can see the color better. And it is giving me a little bit of a Barbie pink effect, which is interesting because I would say that the other products run really warm on me, but this is definitely running a lot cooler. So now going in with the mini lipstick, so here is the OG Pillow Talk lipstick and lip liner on my lips. And as expected, the Pillow Talk lipstick looks the same as the lip liner, so it has that same sort of cool toned pink on me. And I do want to note that Pillow Talk Original and Pillow Talk Medium are both in her matte formula, whereas Pillow Talk Intense is in her kissing formula, which is the more moisturizing one. So I would say that this lip ironically does not go very well with this overall look, at least on me. I think because I cooled down the eyes a little bit with those browns, it's not looking too jarring. But if I had just the normal Pillow Talk quad on my lips and I put on this lipstick, it would look like they were in totally different families. And that's just because the lipstick is so cool toned in comparison to these other products. So that's kind of interesting to me because I wasn't really expecting them to look so different. Um, but definitely something to note if you have a similar complexion to me. That said, I do like the lipstick and lip liner by themselves. I wouldn't say this is a true nude on me. This is definitely something I would wear more on days when I have kind of a cool toned pinky look going, but it still is a really lovely shade. In terms of comfort, I will say that the inner part of my lips are starting to feel a little bit dry, even though I've only had this matte lipstick on for a short period of time. I do have full size lipsticks in Charlotte's matte formula, and those are generally pretty comfortable as far as mattes go. So I'll have to keep trying out this Pillow Talk one to see if there's a difference in formula at all. There might be given that this is a mini, but hopefully this is as comfortable as my other matte lipsticks from Charlotte. So now for Pillow Talk Medium. So here's the mini lipstick and lip cheat. And here are the swatches. So you can see that this is definitely a lot deeper than Pillow Talk Original and also has more of a berry tone to it. So here's the Pillow Talk Medium lip liner just around the perimeter of my lips so you can still see the contrast with my natural lip color. And this is definitely definitively deeper in that I feel like Pillow Talk Original was a little bit lighter than my natural lip color, but this is a bit deeper. And it has a pretty strong berry rose shade to it. And now for the lipstick. So here we have it with the lipstick on. And like the previous lipstick, this is in the matte formula. And so you can see here that it's definitely deeper and more berry in comparison to Pillow Talk original, which is more of a cool toned pink on me. I would say with the look I have on today, I think this actually matches a little bit better because Pillow Talk original was similar in depth to the eyeshadow and the cheek look. Whereas I feel like since this is a little bit deeper, the contrast reads more as being intentional. And so I'm really liking this combo. I think it just cools down a little bit of the coppery tones from the blush and the eye look. So finally, here we have Pillow Talk Intense, the deepest shade in the collection and also the only one in the kissing formula. And here are the arm swatches. So one interesting thing right off the bat to note is that the lip liner for Pillow Talk Intense is considerably deeper than the lipstick. Whereas for all of the other formulas, the lip liner and lipsticks are basically the exact same shade. And in this case also, the lipstick is not that much deeper than Pillow Talk Medium, at least in the swatch. So if you prefer the kissing formula and you have a medium complexion, you could potentially pair the Pillow Talk Medium lip cheat with this kissing formula Pillow Talk Intense. And in general, kind of zooming out, you can see that the lip colors are all definitely a lot more berry toned compared to the powder products, at least swatched on my skin. So now let's get this last set on my lips. 
Alrighty, so here is the lip liner just by itself, and you can definitely tell it is way more pigmented than any of the previous lip liners. So here we have it with the lipstick, and fortunately they blend together really well. When I was first putting on the lipstick, I was a little bit worried because it is definitely way lighter than the lip liner, as you can see in these swatches. But because this is the kissing formula, it kind of blurs into the lip liner a little bit. It kind of melts the lip liner a bit. And so you still have that contour, but overall the colors kind of meld together. And overall, I would say I really like this combination. So similar to the Pillow Talk Medium, I think because this is a deeper tone, it actually matches better with this look than the Pillow Talk Original, where the slight undertone differences become really jarring. So in this case, you can definitely see a lot more of those rose and brown hues in the lips. And I think that just brings out kind of the pinky brown that I was going for with the rest of the look. So overall, I'm really digging this combo. And given those two matte swatches before this, my lips are really loving this kissing formula right now. It is just so nice and hydrating in comparison. One quick swatch comparison I did want to do was with my Happy Kiss formula from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Passion Kiss. So this is her new Hyaluronic Acid Lip Balm formula. So it's super, super hydrating. And here are the swatch comparisons. So this one over here is the Happy Kiss formula and this one over here is Pillow Talk Intense. So I'd say that Passion Kiss is a little bit more brownish, whereas Pillow Talk Intense has a little bit more of a reddish rose undertone to it. And also, of course, the formulas are different with the Passion Kiss being in a more hydrating formula. So you can probably see that just from the reflectivity in the swatches. Overall though, I think these probably read similarly on the lips though. So if you want something that's a bit more pigmented, then probably Pillow Talk Intense is better. And if you want something more hydrating, like a lip balm, then the Happy Kiss might be the way to go. So I'm just gonna go off and add some bronzer and highlighter to this look and be back with my overall impressions about this Pillow Talk collection. Alrighty, so here we are with the completed look. What do you guys think? So I went in with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in the shade Tan. So that just added a little bit more warmth and dimension to my face. And then for highlighter, I went in with my Ofra Glow Goals since I didn't really wanna change the shades or undertones of the face, but just wanted to add a little bit extra sparkle. So now for my overall thoughts about the Pillow Talk collection. So in general, I would say that there's kind of two color families I see within this, and that's kind of illustrated by the swatches on my arm. So the lip products definitely read more cool toned, and they're more what I think of when I imagine Pillow Talk. So they have more of those pinky brownish undertones to them. I'm really glad that Charlotte came out with Pillow Talk Medium and Pillow Talk Intense because the normal Pillow Talk on me would have been just way too Barbie pink and cool toned. I really enjoyed though both Pillow Talk Medium and Pillow Talk Intense in both the lip cheat and the lipstick formulas. And I would say these minis are a good way to go if you don't care a ton about packaging but really want that Charlotte formula and want to have as many colors in your collection. I would say though if there is one shade that really stands out to you, I would recommend just getting that in the full size because especially for the lipstick, it's just not going to be the same sort of quality experience. My Pillow Talk Medium Tube is already kind of separated from the compact and, you know, I've only used it once, so that's not great. Um, the other two seem to still be nicely embedded, but it's definitely not as much of a luxury experience. If she does someday come out with just the mini lip cheats, I think these are great because they're basically the exact same product, but just half as large. And if you're not someone who really runs through your lip pencils, these are a great way to go. In terms of the powder products, I would definitely say they are way more warm leaning on my skin and they're still really pretty on their own. So don't get me wrong, I do sometimes like going into my Pillow Talk Eye Quad even without my Viseart Neutral Mattes to supplement. But if you're trying to do more of a Pillow Talk look and kind of emulate that pinky nude vibe, then I would definitely recommend pairing it with some cooler brown tones just to kind of balance out the warm undertones. And also with the blush, I would definitely say that is good for warm toned looks more so than neutral toned looks. 
Overall though, I am generally a fan of the collection. I feel a little bit like a moth drawn to the flame, even though it didn't really work out for me starting out, but I really like all of the products now and I think I've figured out ways to use them well in my routine. So I'm really curious to hear from all of you if you've tried Pillow Talk products, what your thoughts have been, because based on the reviews I've seen, it is a little bit hit or miss depending on people's undertones. So I would love to hear down below what your guys' experiences have been. But that's all for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Let me know if you guys are interested in these sorts of shade comparison collection videos. I really enjoyed this one just because I've been wondering for a long time what the differences are between all of the different Pillow Talk original, medium, and intense shades are, and also how that jives with some of her powder products. But let me know if you guys felt the same way. Thanks again for joining me and I'll catch you next time. Bye.